The NBC Nightly News did a story on Common Core Mathematics, and within three short minutes they managed to get a lot wrong about mathematics and definitely about mathematics education. Here is the subtraction problem that they used as the centerpiece of their story. But for some, Common Core is creating common confusion. Take 34 minus 9. Many would say that's relatively simple. Carry the 1, 14 minus 9 is 5, bring down the 2, you get 25. Under Common Core, second graders learn different methods and need to show all steps. One example, using a number line, they can see 9 is 1 away from 10, which is 20 away from 30, and 4 from 34. Add those together to get 25, and if 9 and 25 are 34, 34 minus 9 equals 25. Using three times as many steps to get to the same answer. This example, like many others online, is meant to show that the traditional approach is good and the quote-unquote common core approach is bad, but this of course rests on many false assumptions. Here are some of the false assumptions behind these kinds of examples. The standard algorithm is simple. The number line approach, or other common core approaches, is confusing and convoluted. Math is about getting answers and getting them quickly. Math education is about teaching algorithms. Let's take these one at a time. We know from research with both children and adults that standard algorithms are not simple. With children, if you try to directly teach them standard algorithms without having a conceptual basis, it's actually a very complicated, mysterious process, and mathematics teachers could tell you how complicated this is, and that's probably why, as NBC reported, a majority of math teachers are in favor of Common Core. Adults tend to think the algorithms are simple, but that's just because they have the benefit of having already learned it. It's not the same for students who are learning it for the first time. Plus, the adults tended to learn it through memorization and rote drill, and we know that memorization and rote drill are very low forms of cognitive processing. Adults, many of them, do not actually realize the reasons for the steps in the standard algorithm or why you do those. They think of things as just digits rather than the actual values that they are. Let's take a look at the example from NBC, and they called this simple, but it was a bit misleading because they actually showed several markings showing up all at the same time. There's actually quite a few steps going on here. So first you have to realize you can't directly take the 9 from the 4, so then you put a slash through the 3, you decrease that to a 2, you put a little 1 on the 4, now you can do 14 minus 9 to get your 5, then you need to bring down the 2 to get your answer of 25. Now there's actually a lot of stuff happening here, but you can't really see it because the algorithm is designed not to clarify the thinking or show the mathematics, it's designed to save space on the paper. That's why you do these small little markings. It's not actually borrowing, it's regrouping. When you slash the 3 and write a 2, you're actually taking the 34 and breaking it up into 20 plus 14. That kind of breaking up and using the structure of numbers is developed in Common Core prior to learning this algorithm so that the algorithm can actually have a chance to make sense to the students. The problem is the algorithm invites you to just go through these steps mindlessly without thinking about what subtraction actually means or what's going on with the numbers themselves. In fact, the whole problem is easier if you think of it as 35 minus 10 instead of 34 minus 9. And that kind of number sense, uh, Common Core attempts to develop in students prior to learning the algorithm. So my contention is that the standard algorithm is not simple, even in that case which was just a two-digit number minus a one-digit number. If you still don't believe me, try to solve this problem right now with the standard algorithm. That's a lot of crossing out and regrouping to regroup so that you can regroup and then finally get started doing your subtracting. Why in the world not just do 5,004 minus 300? You can see that the answer is 4,704. Common Core would say use your number sense, do something that makes sense of the subtraction. The next false assumption from the NBC video is that the number line approach is confusing and convoluted when in fact it gives students a way to visualize subtraction and it gives them a conceptual basis to then later learn the standard algorithm because Common Core still does include the standard algorithm once the time is right. Here's the example from the news clip, and what you can see right away is the number line provides a way for students to think about the meaning of subtraction. It's the distance between 34 and 9. And now with that number line and that conceptual basis, students can reason about it in a variety of ways. Let's track the steps of the specific way that the news broadcaster talked through. So first of all, you would place your 9 and 34 on the number line. 
then you'd realize that the distance from 9 to 10 is 1, then the distance from 10 to 30, your benchmark numbers, is 20, then you have a distance of 4 from 30 to 34, which is where you were trying to go. Now put all of those sub-distances together, 20 plus 1 plus 4 is 25, so 25 is your answer. I am really not sure why the broadcaster put those last two lines on there. They're unnecessary unless she felt like she just needed to have the mathematical sentence 34 minus 9 equals 25 on the page. But to me, that's a very procedural way of thinking. If you think conceptually, you had the answer when you realized the distance between 34 and 9 was 25, because that's the conceptual meaning of subtraction. So the number of steps we have here, uh, very comparable to with the standard algorithm, maybe fewer. Definitely it makes more sense in this case because you have something tangible to reason with the number line. Again, with Common Core, they're not saying this is the only way to do subtraction, but this is one way that you can do to help build a conceptual basis. Later on, you can learn the standard algorithm and hopefully it would make sense. Now let's take care of the last two false assumptions. A lot of people seem to think that math is about getting correct answers and getting them quickly, maybe because that's how they were taught math. But really, math is not about those things. Math is about thinking. It's about thinking carefully and thinking critically. If we want correct answers and we want them quickly, have a computer do it. We don't need to be training our students to do that. But what we can do is have our students be the thinkers of the future because computers can't do that for them. We want them to be critical thinkers. We want them to see structure, see patterns, and have careful reasoning. People also seem to think that mathematics education is about teaching algorithms because they think mathematics is about carrying out these algorithms that get you your answers very quickly. We've tried math education as teaching algorithms directly to students for decades, and we have decades of research that shows it doesn't work. What we know works better is to give students a conceptual basis, and then from that they can develop algorithms, they can talk about formulas, but it's all about the ideas first and the procedures later. The ironic thing is that teaching algorithms directly is not even the best way to get students to be proficient with the algorithms. Uh, if you actually teach them concepts and have them develop their ideas first and then learn the algorithms in a way that makes sense, they'll actually be better at the algorithms. So even if the algorithms are a goal, you can achieve those better by setting up a conceptual basis. And that's what Common Core does. As the teacher says in the video, have students try a variety of ways, learn a variety of ways that, so that they can really see the mathematical idea from different perspectives, and then the algorithm can be one way to bring a cap or a conclusion to those ideas. I'd like to conclude with some truths about Common Core because there's so much misinformation out there thanks to NBC News and others. Common Core includes the standard algorithms as standards that students must learn. So it's false to say that the standard algorithms are the old way to do it, and then Common Core has these other different ways of doing it. Common Core includes the standard algorithms, but they're built upon understanding. And that understanding comes from taking multiple approaches to mathematical ideas to things like subtraction, multiplication, division. Multiple approaches promotes access. It gives more students a chance to enter and think about and have success in the mathematics. It also promotes flexible thinking rather than rote procedural thinking. Mathematics as a field is not about correct answers as quick as you can get them. Math is about careful thinking and reasoning, and Common Core recognizes that and builds that right into the standards themselves. Mathematics education is not about drilling procedures and getting students to be little robots that can churn out answers. Math education is about helping students to make sense of ideas. We know that the old way of doing things does not help people make sense of mathematical ideas, as you can tell by all of the posts and all of the comments from the public, where they really just want a mindless procedure and they don't understand the conceptual models or the representations such as the number line. So Common Core is really needed to try to help the next generation of people have a better sense of mathematical ideas and be better thinkers. Common Core is certainly not perfect, but it is definitely a step in the right direction.